All right, welcome back to Good Day Orlando. Jamie King with you here. This morning's Health Watch, when is the last time you had a good night's sleep, right? March is Sleep Awareness Month, and it turns out the key to successful sleep may depend on both when you sleep and for how long. Joining us live this morning and getting better sleep uh, in and tips on getting better sleep is Dr. Jason Littleton. Jason, good to have you aboard this morning. How are you, friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Jamie? You know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, Jason. I, I got to ask you, does it depend on when we sleep uh, for the best all inclusive sleeps? You know, when we look at it as a whole, tell us about that. You know, absolutely it does. I tell people sleep when sleep with the sun, meaning, you know, start your go to going to bed routine when the sun goes down and, and waking up when the sun comes up. So it is important to stay on a schedule, trying to go into bed at the mm -hmm. same time, waking up at the same time. And if you can't do that, because sometimes there are medical problems that get in the way, then sleep when you can. Seek medical advice. So that can make the difference. Jace, they, they say, you know, the line of thinking is seven, eight hours, right? How much sleep do we do we really need when it's all said and done? In general, seven to nine hours. But listen, the sleep requirement actually decreases as we age, starting with the pre-adolescent um, time frame, about 10 to 12 hours. And then the over 65 uh, demographic is about seven to eight hours. Everyone has a sleep number. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to find that number. You can use innovations such as, you know, Apple Watches and other things you can download from the Android or Apple platforms to kind of determine what that is. Gotcha. Now, we, we always talk about sleep disorders or issues, right? They tell us don't look at your phone before bedtime. The blue light will plague you and you'll be up all night. Maybe sleep apnea. What are, what are some of the most common kinds of sleep issues or maybe disorders as we call them? Well, you know, you've named a few. So like obstructive sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, mm. chronic pain is a big one. People who have chronic pain have difficulty getting to sleep. Alzheimer's is one as well. Depression, mood disorders. All these things can factor in that hamper people to getting a good night's rest. Now we talk about uh, lack of sleep impact overall on health, Jason, and it can affect everything. The way you process mentally, if you're groggy all day, the list goes on and on and on. This is something that people who deal with these issues, can they easily overcome that? You know, they can. If you get on a proper schedule, you know, you can get more sleep. You can get the adequate hours you need because when you do this, this is going to help boost immunity. It's going to help you have good muscle and mm -hmm. tissue repair. It's going to boost learning ability, cognitive ability. You're going to feel overall more energized. So these are things that people can overcome, and there are many different ways to do that. Jace, I got to lastly ask you about sleep aids. Um, everything from like Benadryl to prescription drugs. Is it best to just maybe try to stay away from that? Maybe go for a more, more holistic approach, maybe meditation, breathing, reading before bed. What, what's your take on that? You know, I totally recommend the holistic approach first. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes people do have to seek medical attention, but things that you can do is lower the temperature in your bedroom. You want to keep it around 60 to 67 degrees. Our body normally actually decreases in temperature as we get ready to sleep, and that helps us to get to sleep. And we want to black out the room and increase its melatonin levels, decrease alcohol, decrease caffeine. First of all, sometimes people use alcohol to wind down, but after that effect wears off, it keeps people up at night. Mm -hmm. And plus, spicy foods can cause reflux and increase core body temperature. So we want to do things first to make uh, adjustments so we can get better sleep. And if we do that, then we can avoid some of those pharmaceuticals. Uh, Jason, I hear you on the on the food deal. I, I ordered the jumbo size fajitas at my favorite Mexican restaurant. It was a <laughs> it was a work night, and by about 8:39 that night, I was supposed to be sleeping. I was regretting life and my decision for the jumbo size steak fajitas. So I think you're on. Come the on, side Jamie. <laughs> Dr. Jason Littleton, thanks for joining us. Jay, good to see you, man. Again, I uh, hope to see you in studio real soon. We miss you here at Fox 35. Can't wait. Have a great day, bud.